The pastor has neglected Christ's sheep, his bride, in order to minister to a group of carnal people who do not love God. And all the while, the people of God are starving to death. No, I'm not Alice Cooper, but welcome to my nightmare. We're going to participate in Super Bowl Sunday, not the game itself, but apparently there are evangelical churches that bring the Super Bowl into the Sunday morning service. I have not seen these so-called church services. Please note, before we endure this together, I don't care if a church wants to bring any, everybody together on Sunday night and everybody brings a dish to pass and you watch the big game. No problem. We're, we're not curmudgeonly to that degree. But we're talking about Sunday morning church here. The assembling of the saints, you know, as commanded by God. Let's check out fumble number one. Tom wins the toss, chooses to receive the Bible. We are not going to use the Bible as a football, are we? Patterson back with the kick. Hold on, we're not going to use the Bible to kick it, are we? Outrageous. Oh my goodness! Outrageous. Oh. Out, absolutely outrageous. Let's just imagine that... You wanted to do this in your church, and somehow you were able to meet with our Savior face to face and pitch this idea to him. Lord, so <laughs> on the day you rose from the grave, we're thinking about getting together. <laughs> Check this out. There's this big whoop de doo called the Super Bowl, lewd halftime show, uh, it's Pride Festival, <laughs> everything worldly. And, and we're going to incorporate it into the church service and then check this out. I, I know the third person of the Trinity actually inspired the Bible and you've orchestrated every single detail so that we can have your word that is good for all of life and godliness. Then we want to kick it. Huh? What do you think of that idea? I don't think we have to imagine what he would say. Fumble number to who? It might get loud Cause heaven's coming down, down, down And it might get loud Oh, it might get loud I'm bored Cause heaven's coming down, down Oh, heaven's down, coming down, down <laughs> All right Let's pitch this idea to an Old Testament priest. Hey, I know you've got these regulated worship elements that God has commanded you to do in the temple, but here's what we're thinking. We're going to bring in a band. They're going to rock this place, and we're going to call heaven down. I don't know what that means either, Mr. Priest, but what do you think? Can we do that inside of God's temple? I don't think we have to imagine what the answer would be, fumble number three. I, I, I hope these are the elders. Probably are. Oh, no, no, no! We kicked the Bible again! Oh. Okay. Um. Let's imagine, let's just imagine, you're gonna have to, you're gonna really have to stretch on this one, but let's imagine that you did something so historic it actually caused the calendar to flip from BC to AD. And let's just say whatever it is that you did somehow rescued billions of people from, I don't know, say damnation. Let's just say, we're talking about you here. And we informed you that because of your magnificent behavior and heroism, we want to assemble and celebrate you. But then we informed you because, well, honestly, we're not sure that you're all that relevant or interesting. We're going to import some Super Bowl shenanigans. You'd go, um, excuse me, time out. Uh, what I did and who I am should be the focus of your attention. What does the Super Bowl have to do with the redemptive work of Jesus Christ? The answer, of course, is it doesn't. Fumble number 
four. The quarterback lines up and God says, all right, I'm going to send you with purpose. I'm going to send you with a calling. Here you go. Down set. Go. And then we get it. And we think that we can do it all by ourselves. But hear me, you can't. We need people just like the offensive tackle guards the blind spot of the quarterback. We need people in our life that are guarding our blind spots. Yes. Yes. Now I understand the word. You used a football analogy. There's nothing wrong with using illustrations, but bringing in props wearing jerseys, acting like sportsmen in order to make the point. I'm sorry. If if you cannot make the Word of God interesting, you're just in the wrong business. Seriously, if, if this is what it takes for you to draw a crowd, you're just not qualified to do your job. Fumble number five. This is the attractional model gone wrong, <laughs> which it actually is by very definition. Hey, what is it going to take to attract people to the church? Apparently it takes, well, let's just, uh, let's just give credit where credit is due. Apparently the pastor doing whatever it is that he's, he's doing again, if you need these types of shenanigans to attract people, you just really go to LinkedIn it's time for you to get a new gig. Hey, pastor. Yeah, baby. Okay, I'm just going to make a I'm just I'm just imagining that what 10 $15,000 chair visit the pastor's home. You might just find it there. <laughs> and it was all a write-off. And frankly, it's all so juvenile. This is just so childish. There is a word that is used by Titus to describe older men, older women, younger men and younger women. Same word. It's semnos. It's dignified. There is nothing about this that even comes close. Who do they hope to attract with this? Uh, probably people who are just as juvenile. Fumble number whatever we're on. Oh, wrecking ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Miley Cyrus, right? Stop! I get it! Ay, vilta fish. Are you familiar with the regulative principle of worship? It's the concept that says God gets to dictate the elements that are contained when we gather to worship him. We don't. He does. Go ahead. I'll wait. Look through your Bible for incorporating a wrecking ball and swinging on a chain and wearing a football jersey on Sunday morning worship. Go ahead. You can, you're not going to find that first because that is not what God requires. We need to let him dictate the contents of our worship because when we take it into our own hands, well, even Miley Cyrus, I think it was Miley Cyrus, would blush at what we've done to worship and and to her song, frankly. I never thought Miley Cyrus was a good singer till now. I gave it like a Here we go. Fumble number six. It starts with a perfect spiral that has to be perfectly positioned. The holder has to receive this snap. The actual kicker has Another already sermon. started his motion, okay. trusting that the snap in the hold is perfectly going to be there right as the foot meets the ball. Do you know who's enjoying this sermon? Only one person the dude giving it. All of this indicates it is such a low view of the Bible. It is such a low view of God. And it is such a low view of ecclesiology, church theology. Super Bowl fumble number eight, seven. Oh, boy. Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in birds. Ruined your black tie affair. Let's see her glow sticks, everybody. These are knockoffs. 
This, this is the definition of worldliness in the church. And here's the irony to this. This is not what people need. Don't know if you've noticed. Folks are hurting. They're lonely. They're anxious. They're depressed. They're suicidal. They're fearful. The economics, I know we're supposed to be building back better, but we're not. And it is hard out there. And people don't need trite. They don't need silly. They need a savior. They need something transcendent. They need something bigger than themselves. This, this, this is not what people need. And yet this is, yeah, I know it packs the house, but it's just like a, it's a revolving door of goats. I guess they, you know, some sheep get in there and they, and they escape, but the goats are being amused to pieces, but they don't stay. Why? Because this stuff has no power. Fumble number eight. Patterson holds Driscoll back to kick. We're going to get some emails. Here we go. Oh, no, not again. Please stop. Um, I'm sorry. This is, this is third-class amusements to tickle ears, but it doesn't fill anybody's head with truth, which means their emotions are unaffected, which means their will doesn't change. Do I think that we need to return to hum, 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 hey, that's Latin and swinging the incense? No. But seriously, Super Bowl Sunday? Embarrassing. Wait, there's overtime. There's overtime. Oh boy, <laughs> haven't we all had enough? Just like Sunday's game. All righty, here we go. Just push the button. All right. Ah, there it is. Over. How are we doing, Grace Way? Hey, 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 hey! The pastor's opening line. There it is. The attention grabber. How's everybody doing? We're the Backstreet Boys, and we're back in town. That's what they do at those types of shows, don't they? What else you got, Pastor? Hey, be walking today through the prayer of Jabez. Hey, talk about hip and relevant. <laughs> Didn't we kind of get through that trend about 20 years ago? They are so relevant and contemporary. We say, bless me, bless me, bless me God indeed. <laughs> Death has been defeated. He is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. That's the prayer of Jabez, updated version, sung in a key that nobody recognizes. But all these folks around me gotta have everything. Ah! <sighs> Overtime? No. That deserves a showering of yellow foul flags. No discuss. Welcome to Zitni Potok, Serbia, beautiful country, but oh, so poor. And yet, the Tomorrow Club's finding children in rather forsaken places to share the good news of the gospel and disciple them throughout their younger years. One dollar per child per month. Would you please consider becoming a ministry partner of the Tomorrow Clubs at tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched.